Good morning, students, and welcome to our class. Our course is called English for Academic and Professional Purposes, and here is our course description. It's the development of communication skills in English for academic and professional purposes. Let's start with the virtual classroom rules. Please find a quiet place to work. Always be prepared. Mute your mic when you're not talking and when you're not asked to talk. But when you're asked to talk and recite, please speak. You have to, prepare to be prepared and be on time and be respectful and kind. So our lesson for today will focus on the nature of academic writing. What is academic writing? What is academic English? And when we talk about academic writing, we focus on understanding the differences between academic and non-academic texts, and also the structure of academic texts. Let's start with our learning goals. At the end of the class, you can understand important terms commonly used in English for Academic Purposes class, differentiate academic from non-academic texts, differentiate academic style from other styles of writing, and use knowledge of text structure to glean the information you need. Let's begin with, or let's begin by understanding some definitions of important subject terms. We will have a little game, and I'd like you to pause the video in order to buy some time to answer uh, the whole game. Here are the mechanics of the game. This will be an individual work, obviously. This will be done silently. You have to mute your microphones while answering. You need to work on solving the vocabulary puzzle. You need to rearrange the letters to figure out the right word. Circled letters with designated numbers below corresponds to the placement of letters in the secret message at the bottom of the puzzle. The secret message should be sent to the chat box after the queue. Whoever sends the correct secret message first on the chat box wins the game. And you only have two minutes to figure out all the words. If this is in a classroom setup, but since this is a video, um, this is a video presentation, you can just simply pause the video until you get the correct answers. Let's begin with the first three. Moving on. Next. And finally. Here are the answers to the puzzle. Number one is academic, two, text, three, structure, four, technical, five, style, six, discipline, seven, content, eight, non-academic, nine, audience, and number 10, explicit. I hope you got all the right answers correctly, and I hope that you were able to understand the definition of these words. So, what's the hidden word? The answer is academic English. Now, let's begin by looking at the differences between academic and non-academic texts. In order to understand academic texts better, let's look at this paragraph. You can pause this video to give you time to read. After reading, I would like you to look at the questions on the left side. You may pause the video as you respond to the questions. Now let's try and answer the questions. In order to answer the first question, we can look at the purpose of the text and what it wants to explain. The text explains one's opinion on the right to own a gun. It could be an assignment written by a student on this topic or a concerned citizen who would like to post his or her opinion on the topic. 
On to the next question. For whom is the text intended? In other words, who could be the immediate audience of the text? In writing, audience refers to the readers of the text. Here, if the paragraph is written by a student, then the immediate audience would likely be the teacher. However, if it's written by a concerned citizen, it might have been written to influence others' opinion on the subject and thus might have no specific or immediate audience. Moreover, the text discusses the right of people to own a gun and the text is easy to comprehend. Let's go to number three. In order to answer the next question, we have to focus on and examine how the paragraph is written. Look at the following highlighted words. What can be said about the writer's dic diction or choice of words? While some of the words used are formal, informal words can also be found in the paragraph. Words like sort of, kind of, stuff, would of, and shooters can be considered informal as they are more used in speech than in writing. You would often hear these words used when talking to someone than in written text. One under other noticeable feature of this paragraph is the way the sentences are written. Most of the sentences begin with the same words. They kind of think, they also think, I also think, and I also think which makes the paragraph dull, redundant, and casual. Moreover, some of the sentences began with words like but and and. These are conjunctions, and if you could remember your writing teachers back in high school, one important rule when writing formally is to avoid beginning sentences with conjunctions. These word choices make the paragraph casual and informal. For the question number four, organization in written text is important. We can see that the text follows a structure. The text begins with the writer's overall opinion on the topic and proceeds to support this by providing examples and citing statements of people. Now, let's take a look at this other text. It has the same subject, but written in a very different manner. Because we were already able to answer numbers one and two, let's focus on the third and fourth questions. How does the paragraph look this time? What kind of vocabulary words were used? Are there any varieties in the construction of sentences? Is it error-free? As compared to the text earlier, this paragraph observed the use of formal, objective, accurate, and sophisticated language to express the overall opinion. The verbs used are varied, as well as the manner the sentences began. Words like however, moreover, and in addition help to organize information. This paragraph also doesn't use a lot of personal pronouns. Unlike the first paragraph that consistently used the pronouns I and they to refer to nouns in the paragraph, this text doesn't show the author as an element in the text. The author used the third-person point of view to maintain objectivity in presenting ideas. One important feature of this paragraph is the item found at the bottom. This is called a reference. References are often placed at the end of a material to indicate that some of the ideas used came from an external source. It could be a book, a journal, or a newspaper. References are important to make sure that no plagiarism is made and sources are properly acknowledged. Now that we have seen the differences between these two paragraphs, we understand the differences of academic text and non-academic text. Let's look at these differences further. Academic and non-academic text can be differentiated based on a few aspects. First is the audience. 
As mentioned earlier, audience refers to readers. The audience of academic texts are what we call academics. Academics include um, people engaged in any educational practices or activities. Some examples would be professors, teachers, researchers, scholars, and students like yourself. As you might have observed, most of your writing and speaking assignments require you to use formal language. One example would be research papers. They are written by professionals in a specific field or discipline. Thus, an architect writing a paper on the theories of architecture would use words and concepts specifically used in that field. This may not be understood by people who are not architects. In the same way, a chemist writing a scientific report would use, would use discipline-specific words to describe an experiment. An architect might not be able to understand this. On the other hand, non-academic text audience are the general public. In other words, people who understand English. Some non-academic texts, however, have specific audiences too. Take, for example, a cookbook or a recipe. Although everyone can understand the book, some recipes are written for people who have more experiences in cooking. This might mean that others may not understand the content of the book. The content of academic texts are usually serious in thought. In other words, most academic texts are written with a purpose to inform, argue, or explain a subject. Writers of academic texts are often authorities or professionals who have a wide understanding of a subject. For example, in order to explain the characteristics of the coronavirus, scientists report the result of their studies. To explain the steps in simplifying an equation, a textbook will show steps in an organized and accurate manner. On the other hand, the content of non-academic texts are usually of general or personal interest. Trending topics in social media or features of people or events that became viral overnight would be topics of general interest. However, there are many texts considered non-academic whose topics are of serious thought as well. Take, for example, newspapers. Broadsheets are often written in concise, accurate, and objective language. However, there are also newspapers called tabloids that are oftentimes written in colorful, artistic language, thus making it informal. Style is another important feature of a text that would tell you whether it is formal or informal. Academic texts follow a specific structure, and this structure is followed strictly by writers. Remember in high school when your English teachers ask you to write an essay with a clear introduction, body, and conclusion? Well, that's because an essay's structure follows at least these three parts. Similarly, a scientific report or a research paper would follow the elements or parts that is unique to these papers. Because academic texts are written to inform, explain, describe, or argue, they are written using formal, sophisticated, and objective language to maintain seriousness. Academic texts also often use longer sentences to explain concepts, complex ideas. Non-academic texts, on the other hand, would often use shorter sentences, slang, or colloquial expressions, and informal language in general, depending on the purpose. Recreational or entertainment magazines might use a more casual approach to sound friendly or to sound as if you're just talking to the reader. However, it's important to take note that some academic texts are written using an informal style, while some non-academic texts are written in a formal style. One example would be textbooks written to sound like the author is just talking to the student. The reason why the approach is like such might be because the author doesn't want the reader to feel that the book is too difficult to follow. On the other hand, non-academic texts like newspapers often follow a straightforward, formal style to observe objectivity. Let's move on to structure. Both academic and non-academic texts follow some form of structure. 
However, academic texts strictly follow a specific structure and does not intend to change. For example, a research paper follows a unified structure that must be followed by all researchers when writing. The authors are thus not given much room to try out other p patterns. In a similar way, an essay doesn't start out with the body first or the conclusion. It always starts with an introduction. On the other hand, writers of non-academic texts are given more freedom to experiment on the structure of their work based on their style. Academic texts are free of any grammatical errors. Non-academic texts, on the other hand, are also free of any grammatical errors. However, you might have read a magazine that used an incomplete sentence or your favorite novel with lots of incomplete sentences. These are not because the authors didn't know how to write. It's all part of their style. Finally, the vocabulary words used in academic texts are subject-specific, accurate, and academic. A report on an experiment in chemistry would use words specifically used in chemistry, while a research paper in literature would use words in the discipline. Because there are specific words used and understood only in a specific discipline or field, they are called subject or discipline specific. On the other hand, non-academic texts use words often used in speech. Depending on the subject, it allows the use of contractions such as isn't, doesn't, couldn't, and many more. Idioms are also used to show artistic effect. Based on our analysis on the differences of academic and non-academic texts, we can therefore define academic texts as written by professionals in a given field, edited by the author's peers, and often takes years to publish, uses language that is formal and will contain words and terms typical to the field, the author's names will be present, as well as their credentials and there will be a references list that indicate where the author obtained the information he or she is using in the article. On the other hand, non-academic texts are written for the mass public. They are often published quickly and can be written by anyone. They often use language that is informal, casual, and may contain a bit of slang. Authors might not be provided and will not have any credentials listed, and commonly, there will be no reference list. Now that we understand the differences between academic and non-academic texts, let's play a little game. You can pause the video as you're uh, playing along and uh, play the video when you're done. So I'd like you to identify whether the following texts are academic and non-academic as well as the type of text, what type of text this is. Let's start with this one. This is an example of a non-academic text, and this is a magazine article. Let's proceed with the second one. This is an academic text, and this is an example of a journal. If you look at the title of this text, as you can see, the, um, the title, this is a title of a research, a qualitative study of Philippine poverty. The name of the author is present at the bottom, and the information in the text or in the study also says that it came from the Journal of Counseling Psychology. We can see 19 citations or 19 references and it has been read by 13,021 uh, times. How about this? This is an example of a non-academic text and this is the Holy Bible. How about this one?
This is an example of a non-academic text, and this is a literary piece, or specifically a novel. What about this one? This is an academic text, and this are this is an example of a textbook in, I believe, uh, chemistry or physics. How about this one? Correct. This is an example of a non-academic text, and this is an example of a newspaper article. How about this one? This is an example of an acad academic text, and it's an example of a thesis. What about this? Correct. This is a non-academic text, and it's an example of an office correspondence or a letter, a resignation letter. On the other hand, this is an academic text. This is what we call a critic or a review of a research paper. What about this? This is an example of an academic text. These are conference papers. Conference papers are still examples of research papers or um, research articles. I hope that you understood the differences between academic and non-academic texts. In our next video, we're going to look into the structure of academic texts. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope that you learned a lot from this video.